Oh shit, that's me! Hello again, Garmin Ryder here, back with another commentary. See, I told you we'd get to Cinema Sins eventually. The video is titled, Everything Wrong with Robots in 13 Minutes or Less. Let's go. Graphic design is my passion. Do you really not know how to format your text properly? Or do I need to read it to show you how fucked up it is? Everything spoilers wrong, robots duh, within 13 minutes or less. F minus minus, see me after class, we're putting you in the special needs room tomorrow. They eat ice grease instead of ice cream, because they are like humans, but they are not humans. But why would a robot eat grease? You would use grease on your joints to keep from squeaking. Instead of ice cream, they should have made this an icy hot joke or something. You're not funny. 24 seconds in and you're already making jokes. And I've avoided saying this in the last video, but I'm gonna do it here. This sin timer is pointless. YouTube has a timestamp feature. Here at the robot barber shop, he just literally saws the top of a robot's head off. So again, the analogy is thin. That's not a haircut. That's permanent. This is an auto body shop, not a barber shop. It's a joke on the saying, a little off the top. Can you not get humor right? Robot chicken. You're not funny. And thanks for reminding me of what I could be watching instead of this video. I'm gonna be a dad! Nothing screams excitement about becoming a father quite like leaping directly into the flow of oncoming traffic. I mean, he's becoming a dad. So, of course, he's gonna be recklessly happy. Wouldn't you? Oh, right, that will require a maid, which you are incapable of having. Pow! Oh! Both of these robots are in the road, and although one clearly should be in the road, they are essentially taking up the same space. Traffic anger robots should just roll around them, is all I'm saying. Nitpicking. 3.5 kilograms? That's 7.7 .7 pounds. For an entire robot baby and packaging? I'm calling shenanigans. Human babies can weigh around 8 pounds, but not metal babies. More nitpicking. What's that extra piece? We did want a boy, right? <clears throat> this won't hurt a bit, son. What in the everlasting f That was funny and you know it, damn it. Look, I like puns. Puns are fine. But your comedy can't be all puns. Did you really forget the dick joke from earlier? Also, they're not even trying here. This may be the worst example of words on pages I have ever seen. The comprehensive slot of the bloom, but vacuum stack of the bloom forbidden. Should I go on? Is this helping anyone learn how to raise a fucking baby robot? Wow, it's almost as if the focus isn't on the book, but instead of the characters. <laughs> this is a middle finger to every real human parent ever. I mean, most kids' movies do have scenes at the expense of the parents. So they just keep giving him new parts as he gets older, and that's how he gets bigger? But when they've replaced all the parts with bigger parts, there's none of the original boy left, is there? I mean, as long as his mind is intact, he should be fine. Also, I will never forgive this movie for making me consider hand-me-down boy parts. Hey, that's on you for coming to that creeping conclusion. You sick fuck! Ow! Why is the bass drum a sentient robot? None of the other instruments are. Which of these robot parents ordered a baby robot that was shaped like a drum? Someone doesn't know what a joke is. Hey, Dad! Who's that? That, Rodney, is Big Well. No, oh, that is a balloon. You're not funny. He invents things that make everyone's life better. Oh, just like Kanye West. I'm not repeating myself. So he's inventing, and he's invented a robot. His parents just ordered one, and it came in a box. It was him, but now the movie's saying there are ways to build sentient robots at home. When you're a child, does inventing in this movie just mean think of a kind of robot that doesn't exist yet that we could all benefit from? I mean, that's what inventing IRL is, so kinda yeah. Also, inventing and building are two different things. These are your 12-year-old parts. I swear to God, if they start talking about the copper birds and buzzing bees, I'll skip to the end, add a few million sins, and never look back. You're not funny. Also, there had to be a better way to phrase this part stuff. What about, these are your bits, or these are your pieces. Here's your wind-up You see what this movie is doing to me? You brought this upon yourself. Just to recap a little, the little robot made a smaller robot to help the older robot wash dishes. You know, rather than inventing an industrial dishwasher. Dishwashers don't get things 100% clean all the time. As a functional adult, you should know this. Look, it seems you can upgrade your parts if your parents have money, and if they don't, you're stuck being hand-me-down and poor. Which is how Rodney's dad is a dishwasher, because that's the best torso part his own parents could afford for him. And this actually speaks directly to income equality in America and how hard it is for any generation raised in poverty to break free of its hold. Even though I think the movie was just going for a cheap your poor joke. They weren't. The whole point of the movie is about the problems with capitalism. 
I'm never going to be someone here. You made a movie about an entire robot society and you went with wants to get out of this small town for a hero's motivation. It's one of the only ways they could portray this message properly. I'll make you proud. I know you. He says this instead of saying you already have. That's a dad fail right there. Coming from the guy who has no kids. Oh! They repeatedly called this space transport a train. Wow, it's almost as if the robots are supposed to represent people. I wonder if you, yeah, I wonder if you, could, you direct me to Big Weld Industry. Big cities are bustling and the small town protagonist takes a moment to adjust to the pace cliche. Having cliches in a movie isn't always a bad thing. It's only bad if you overuse them. Spontaneous dancing. What even are you criticizing? It's a robot doing the robot, get it? This movie is to humor what Scary Movie 4 is to airplane. Coming from the person, I have to remind that they aren't funny every five minutes. What are the odds he ends up paired in a travel ball with the guy that tried to take his picture and sell it to him back about, oh, three minutes ago? Someone hasn't heard of a coincidence. No one will be seated during the Rube Goldberg bingo ball flex portion of the movie. That should look cool and you know it. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but adjusting your own neck like this is a really bad idea. No one need to hear that. We're not idiots. Marble Madness. You're not funny. Jesus, shoe shining Christ, this is supposed to be a regular mode of transportation. This video game shit might have seemed cool on paper, but it makes zero sense, you fucking dip shit. It's called world building. And by dip shits, I am referring to the six credited writers that wrote this movie. Eat my ass. Quality over quantity. No worries, we will 100% accidentally bump into his bumper again. I have no doubt. He's voiced by fucking Robin Williams, man. To be honest, it's best to suspend your disbelief when it comes to kids' movies, especially ones featuring robots. Can I help you? This scene, Wizard of Oz, is so hard it makes my ruby slippers get tingly. Congratulations, you got the reference. Now get out. Instagram weight loss ads. Congratulations, you got the... Okay, how many times am I going to have to repeat myself? Self-fulfilling prophecies. No idea what you're referring to. I don't know, guys. I just don't think this is how magnets work. Suspend your disbelief with robot kids' movies. Rodney survives this. In this case, it makes more sense since, well, the robots. This sh looks as much like a Guitar Hero background as it does a scene from a movie. I mean, in this scene, he does have a musical number, if I remember correctly. Alright! Break time! Alright, break time's over! Chop chop! <laughs> Well, there's ten seconds I'll never get back. I guess that was supposed to be funny. Or just prove how cruel this woman is. Either way, I'm sinning this horse shit. Well, yes, it is played as a joke. It's supposed to be a reference of how sweatshop workers rarely get breaks. In a couple of weeks, all those broken down losers out there are gonna be nothing but scrap metal. And after you finish off Big Weld, there will be nobody out there to fix them. I would call this a villain expositing their plan for the good guy moment, except there are no good guys here. Just plus viewers, so kind of even more egregious. You pointed out a flaw in your sin, and you used it anyways. Jeez, that's rich. You sick f- What are you afraid of? Grow some bolts. Balls. She means balls. But this movie doesn't have the bolts to just admit it's an hour and a half of bad puns. It's still a kid's movie, so they can't be so blatant with their dick jokes. Absolutely none of these conveyor belts are placed in a sensible manner outside of what makes a cool movie shot. What did I say about your sense of disbelief? Just deep. Me over, I'm poor, me out. Told you this fool was coming back into the picture. You ran out of things to sin, so you sin the same thing twice. I just want to point out that someone decided to stack about six barrels of ball bearings on top of each other in a pyramid just for kicks. That robot is obviously an asshole. Given how the workers are portrayed in this movie, they have every right to be an asshole. Look, 10,000 ball bearings on the floor does not make it a f***ing people mover. Both these robots have already fallen ten times by now if this movie is being real... You're not funny. You suck. He's a head in a basket! Would you like to take it out and ask it? Thanks for making Numbskill's job easier, so now he can just copy-paste the words, You're not funny. Over and over again. Not, not funny, 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 not funny. Fu right, it's so cool to see all the Crayola crayon colors back together. You're not funny. You're not you're funny, not funny. Not fu you think you can mess with my big brother? You're, you're kind of cute. Oh, hell. You're so lazy, you can't even give criticism on this part. Oh, hell is right. By the way, the name's Piper. Rhymes with Viper. She wants his hammered in robot dick. You're not funny! The brand new model of the robot torso has six f***ing cup holders in the ab section. I mean, that does sound pretty cool. Beating off your head in public. You're not funny. Ah! F***ing hell, here's another needlessly complicated mode of robot transportation. It's called world building. 
Jesus Christ, this is some genocidal What the f family movie about robots? Welcome to the harsh truth of reality, Jeremy. What happened to your friend? He's been rear-ended. Along with the entire plot. How so? Care to explain? Oh right, your cinemasins. This movie somehow made $260 million! Yeah, it's a good movie. Oh man, this is my third oil change today. Something's wrong with me. So oil changes are now basically poops. And even that is weird, since most humans poop every day and most cars get oil changes every three months. Suspend your disbelief with robot kids movies. Somewhere out there beneath the robot sky. You're not funny. I'm real close, listen. No, wait. Jesus, I'm farting Christ, I can't believe this f***ing sh Even for a fart joke, this is as funny as shit. Pun intended. You consider me your friend? Sure, what else would I consider you? Fender and Rodney just met, so they are barely out of stranger territory. And honestly, Fender should be considered a con artist and a thief far before being a friend. Kid movie contracts must include inexplicable leaps to friendship. If Rodney stuck it out for so long, then chances are he's considered them friends for a while now. Hey kids, get a load of this! <laughs> So lazy you can't even bother to use words. You're turning into Nani. What is that thing? Never try, never fail. Those are the words I live by. I believe Aaron Burr said that. No, that was me. Thanks yourself. You're about to get very popular. My friend Jack told me the same thing shortly before I went streaking through the quad, but it turned out he was my enemy Jack and I got arrested. Should have stayed in jail to be honest. Back off! Back off! He's got his own dreams that won't come true! <laughs> wow, this movie made me laugh. You might think I'd remove a sin, but no. It took 43 minutes for a movie co-starring Robin Williams to make me laugh. That's a sin. You don't laugh, it's a sin. You do laugh, it's a sin. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Six writers! Quantity over quantity. They all chant Rodney Rodney, but that montage showed that everyone pitched in here, including Fender for some reason. Why is Rodney getting all the praise? I mean... He's the one who announced the fixing, so of course they'd cheer him. This movie can't get analogies right at all. Here they're using buffers to stand in for a personal massage. But a buffer isn't massaging anything. It's literally just making shit shinier. This is the laziest movie since Brown Bunny. And that movie made you watch a car washing and a blowjob in real time. You already know what I'm gonna say. You're not fun. What about tomorrow when everybody gets the idea this is okay? We can fix ourselves. Apple. Congratulations, you understood the whole point of the movie. I'll tell you what, I would expect in a world of metal robots that need constant mechanical attention, I expect that there would be more than one robot who knows how to assemble parts for repair. This movie asks us to believe that the entire city is rescued because one inventive robot knows how to use tools and piece together parts. That's like asking me to believe that there's only one doctor in a city that knows how to help a body heal after an injury. Well, it's supposed to be a symbolism for, well, Apple. F*** you, mailbox bot! Get the f*** out of my house! You didn't knock? Jesus. You're not funny. Rodney. Are you really worried about your dad? I just want to know the alternative answer to this one. No, I'm not worried about my dad dying. I sort of want him to die because he's a reminder of the working class and clearly I am super above that. Oh, heartless. You sound like my mother. <laughs> I suppose now we pause and consider all the various shocking things that Little Tim could display that would cause a grown woman to faint. One, Little Tim's Little Tim is really slim. Two, there's a chicken in his pants. Well, that list is much shorter than I thought it would be. So the movie isn't allowed to make dick jokes, but you are? A Ricola joke. That'll definitely stand the test of time. You're not funny. Rodney's invention bot gets drunk because the bartender mistakes it for a mixer. And that's hilarious? Why would alcohol make robots drunk? They f***ing eat grease! Something, something, suspend disbelief, not funny dick joke. Fender is f***ing useless. A literal ball and chain would be more helpful to Rodney. He's still Rodney's friend. What, are friends only good if you benefit from them? You do sound like my mother. Thanks for walking me home. Thanks for carrying me up that hill. Thanks for wasting my f***ing time with humorless bullshit. You're the one who bought the ticket. You crazy nut boy. Crazy about you. Today I learned robot romance makes me gag. Someone here doesn't ship roll.exe and megaman.exe. Fender does a singing in the rain spoof called singing in the oil and it's offensive to singing in the rain, Gene Kelly, and people with good taste. Considering I'm one of the five people on planet Earth who actually likes Sword Art Online, you might be right, considering how awesome Fender's singing is. 
Also, clearly the goal here was to replicate Aladdin's success and let Williams ramble and ad-lib ad nauseum. But the difference is all in the editing. That and having a good story to begin with, and this movie has no story. It does. You just don't give it a chance. As they break into Big Weld's place, very easily, mind you, I have to wonder why no one else has ever tried this before if he's been missing for so long. Because breaking in is illegal? Another Rube Goldberg, but this one is mixed with, get this, an ocean of dominoes that the missing Big Weld surfs in on. The animators are like, I don't give a I'm gonna copy-paste a million dominoes into this animation computer program and see what happens. This entire movie is sucking at the teat of Rube Goldberg. And they make it work. Also, if you took out all the Rube Goldberg in this movie, it would be roughly 29 minutes long. You have no proof. Even if you did, that would mean you wasted your time doing it. Well, Rodney and Watserbolt are clearly graduates of the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. You're not funny. F***ing hell. 80% of the characters only exist to pad the runtime. You're not even showing what you're referring to. <laughs> God damn this movie's obsession with literal poop. By obsession, you mean two times. Wow, Fender found his way into Attack of the Clones. Just because one movie does a similar thing to another movie doesn't mean it's ripping off that movie. Man, he falls apart more often than C-3PO. Hey, another Star Wars ripoff. What did I just fucking say? Ah! This is so wrong! Gender shaming. Uh, how? If we don't do something about Ratchet, no one will! This is basically Bugs Life, but with robots. I mean, it's obviously a lot of movies, but with robots. But right now, it's particularly Bugs Life with robots. This video writes itself. Um, skills break click is gonna fall off after this shit. I never solved anything. You must have missed the American Revolution, my dear. And Tyson v. Douglas. You're not funny. Someone get a crane. Show some respect for the woman who let your friends take a ride in her ass. Wait, no, yeah, that's right. Congrats, you got the joke. Now fuck off. Know what I've done to get here? The lies I've told! This sniveling goes on for way too much sometime. You say as you show it for six seconds. <laughs> the Wonderbot, designed to wash dishes quickly, ends up being the literal ex machina our hero needs here in the climax. And I'm about to climax myself from annoyance. Gross. Driving against marble traffic. Why are you even criticizing? Thank God this entire city is a Sonic the Hedgehog level. You're not funny. Some f***ing unbelievable ass and I both f Did you just have a fucking stroke? Oh no, you were trying to be funny. Then by all means, fucking stop. It's a rare metal. It's called a fradium. It's yellow. Tastes like chicken. That's racist. What was racist about that? Absolutely nothing. I guess I'm just wondering why she needs to open this little window if the entire wall could just fall in. It's called a visual gag. So Fender's sister does the Gandalf here and shows up at the last bit of the battle, but still in time to turn the tide for the good guys. What did I say earlier about cliches? Most of this whole final battle is a bunch of visual whatever. Says the guy skimming through it. Fender wins his portion of this ridiculous robot battle by dancing to Britney Spears? No, just no. You're gonna say that you don't like something, you better say why or else it's nothing more than just saying, I don't like it, which is lazy. Dishwashing Wonderbot will now kick the villain's mother's butt. And I'm so f***ing tired of this movie, I physically ache. Good. Piper was left behind at Big Weld, and from there, she raced back to her neighborhood to rally a small army of robots to fight for their right to spare parts. Yes, everyone pitches in for the big win, but without Piper, everyone else would be dead, and the movie does a terrible job of giving her the prop she deserves. Okay, you do have a bit of valid criticism here. The movie should have given characters more screen time. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Cliché. What did I say about clichés earlier? Evil Mom falls into the fire, and Evil Son gets stripped of his upgrades, and that is all good stuff, needed stuff, but will someone please end this movie and put me out of my misery already? No need to be bitter and patient. The movie is almost over. I've brought enough parts to make two of you! Which raises the question, what makes any of these robots unique? There are two boxes of herb here, and does that mean that if they put a new herb together, there are two herbs with one personality? Or one herb, but multiple bodies? Overthinking it. Also, if you can start off as a full-grown robot, why go through the trouble of the whole baby thing in the first place? So they can gain experience for when they become adults. Is now my right-hand bot and my eventual successor. All because he was the first to walk into an unlocked mansion where I used to live and basically for no other reason. Capitalism! Even though this movie is against capitalism... Dad, you always wanted to be a musician. Now be one. For everyone to hear. Well, what if he played piano or guitar? He just handed him a f***ed up hybrid of a French horn and some alien bull trumpet, so <laughs> you are asking the impossible is my point, dick. I'm pretty sure his dad told him what he played. Well, that's it for today.
That lasted longer than I expected, to be honest. Well, until next time, goodbye. Hey everyone, my name is Numbskilled. Just doing a ending editor's note here. Uh, this is my first real time doing editing for another person's video. And I wanted to say thank you to Carmen Ryder for trusting me with this. So please subscribe to Carmen Ryder if you want to see more stuff like this. And um, if you already know who I am or don't, then uh, feel free to check out my stuff on my YouTube channel, Numbskill. Anyways, uh, stay safe, and uh, we're just trying to point out all the problems with the world, even if you already know what they are. Because let's face it, the world sucks, and we should have been extinct by uh, by now. Because honestly, we we deserve it. Uh, good night, everybody. Cause I'm a